All right, here we go. Knicks Fan TV Court Vision is kicking back off Summer League style. And today's edition, we're going to cover Knicks rookies Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride. Joining me today's special guest, my guy Alex Amarante, a.k.a. Knicks Draft on Twitter. Alex, how are you feeling today, man? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, as recording right now, Summer League kicks off today. So uh, excited yeah. to see what the rookies and uh, the rest of the young guys can do. Yeah, excited to see what these rookies are going to do and, and uh, you know, educate the people a little bit on, on what to watch out for. Number one with Quentin Grimes, man. When you, when you look at him, the, the shooting numbers and the overall offensive numbers, you know, jump off the board. Let's, I mean, take a look at some of these percentiles, his rankings in the NCAA. He was in the 84th percentile in overall offense, 92nd in transition, 86 in pick and roll ball handler 70th in isolation man uh let's let's start with Quentin Grimes and and uh his top skill set which is his three-point shooting yeah absolutely you hit on uh, a lot of the numbers there uh pretty you know staggering um his era at Houston that he just had uh you talk about the three-point shooting that's kind of the number one thing that's brought up with him um you have the accuracy 40 percent shooter from deep you have the volume. He took uh, 248 three-point attempts last year. Um, you know, that's 8.3 per game, 15.3 per 100 possessions. Uh, there's not many other uh, players in the country that had that kind of three-point rate last year. And then when you mix in kind of his shot diet uh, in terms of jumpers, he's taking them off the catch. He's taking them off screens. He's taking them off dribble handoffs. Uh, he's creating his own shot off the dribble. The kid can really do it all. Um, and, and he's really shown improvement pretty much each year in college. Uh, you know, this is a five-star kid coming out of high school, uh, primarily playing point guard. Um, had a rough year at Kansas freshman year, but then really settled in when he transferred to Houston when he was kind of asked to do less primary ball creation uh, and running the offense and really just sticking to a role, uh, being a, you know more three and D style, uh, playing off ball, playing a little bit on ball, creating his own shot, things like that. And, and you see that really bear out with the three-point numbers. Um, I think the shot is real. Um, I don't think there's really anything that of too much concerns with mechanics or anything like that. Uh, you look at his catch-and-shoot numbers, for for instance, uh, 1.09 point per possession. That's 66 percentile on synergy. And even when you go deeper on those, he was better when he was guarded on those catch-and-shoot shots. Uh, 83rd percentile, he ranked and shot 41% on him. So this is a guy who's not afraid with a hand in his face. Uh, you know, he has a quick release on the shot, so he's able to get it off. Uh, you know, good size at 6'5", uh, at the two-guard position. Uh, so I think sh three-point shooting is kind of that immediate impact that you can kind of look for in Grimes, um, you know, coming off the bench. Even if it's in a limited role, just given some of the signings the Knicks had this offseason, uh, I think given eight, ten minutes a game, um, especially maybe a little bit more in the middle of the season. Um, I think he'll be able to, to kind of fill in that, that three and D role. Yeah. And you know, I, I think it's apparent in, in what the Knicks were looking for are, are guys that can get off difficult shots, man. You look at what happened, especially in the playoffs against the Hawks where we got exposed. Uh, we, we just didn't have guys that get, that could hit tough shots. I mean, Julius was that guy for us all year long. And obviously Derek Rose, you know, is, is capable of doing such things, but we just didn't have enough there. Burks can certainly get it done, but we just didn't have enough overall. Uh, Knicks finished in the bottom third of the league in effective field goal percentage off of pull-up jumpers. Um, second to last in the playoffs and so you know you hope that Grimes could certainly add a little bit here but as you said you know the, the arsenal in, in which he's, he's getting his shots off off the dribble in isolation uh, cash and shoots spot ups uh, off screens as well hopefully the Knicks you know start to run some more off ball actions for guys like Quentin Grimes I think that'll really open up the offense so uh, yeah that I'm definitely looking forward to and as you said off catch and shoots 83% 83 percentile when guarded so again a guy that can that can get some difficult shots off um so i thought that's definitely a plus one of three uh people to hit 103 pointers in the season last year in the ncaa and uh over 40 percent from three with on eight attempts that's, that's a healthy diet right there yeah absolutely and you and you hit on the, the off the dribble stuff too uh you know he averaged just under 0.9 points per possession uh which is 63rd percentile uh, only shot 33% of those in that half court, but a lot of those are difficult kind of off the dribble threes. Uh, so he had, he, but he still had the volume 
and the numbers there are still very good as well. So yeah, the mixture of the catch and shoot stuff and off the dribble stuff, I think makes him a really intriguing shooting prospect. It's beautiful, man. But to get on the court early, he's going to have to play some defense. And that's another skill set of his, man. What's uh, some of the things that jumped off the charts to you? Yeah, I really like him uh, as a point of attack defender. Uh, you can kind of throw him on an island, at least at, at the collegiate level. Uh, and, you know, he's able to slide his feet on the perimeter and stay with uh, smaller, quicker guards. You know, I mentioned his size before. It's 6'5". He also has 6'8 wingspan. So he, he's able that, that helps him, um, you know, he kind of bumps guys off his spot. He has decent strength, uh, can always get stronger. But uh, at the collegiate level, he was able to kind of stay in front of guys and really force them to pick up their dribbles and, and force them into tough, you know, off the dribble jumpers. And kind of one stat that kind of jumped out to me when I was doing my research, uh, you know, per synergy in isolation uh, situations, opponents shot just 17 percent when guarded by Quentin Grimes. Mm. Uh, which is a ridiculously low number, um, you know, that, that would probably rank number one in the, in the NBA uh, in terms of those stats. Uh, I'm not sure what it was in the NCAA, but it was, uh, you know, incredible stats to just read that, you know, he's able to stop his guy from scoring, which, you know, as a point of attack defender, that's kind of what your number one job, especially in isolation si- situations. Yeah, as you said, man, you got to like what what you're seeing on film here, man. He's got he's got a big body. Obviously, he's going to get bigger once he gets into that NBA program. Nice wingspan, moves his feet very well, turns his hip very well. You could see a future at the wing with with he and RJ out there, kind of punishing guys, man. So that's nice to see him at at the point of attack, really getting after guys, and should be able to translate at the next level. And like I said, it's going to keep him on the court or get him on the court earlier as he tries to battle through uh, the depth chart. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, pairing him with RJ, you could kind of play that that bully ball on offense and on defense. Right. Uh, I think, you know, he'll, he'll definitely get stronger as you get him in the NBA weight room and, you know, pair him alongside RJ. I don't think you're going to find many guards kind of driving into those guys uh, and finding much success. So I think they actually make a good pair at the two and three positions. Um, so it would be interesting to see how often they kind of pair up with each other. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to him kind of, you know, fitting in that three and D role, uh, you know, people, you know, throw that, that term out a, a lot for people, but I think, uh, you know, Quentin Grimes is pretty much the, uh, the quintessential kind of prospect in that standpoint where he's going to give you the three and D and then kind of everything else uh, outside of that is just playing with house money at that point. And, you know, if you're playing limited minutes as a rookie, you got to find a role to yeah. just thrive in. And I think that's the role that he can really thrive in. He did that at Houston uh, and I could see him doing it uh, with the Knicks. Yeah, and, and you would hope that his aggressiveness, aggressiveness on defense, you know, creates some opportunities, creates some turnovers because he's in the 92nd percentile in transition. And as we talk yeah. about RJ, talk about Quentin Grimes, Knicks also have Obi Toppin who excelled in transition at Dayton. And uh, we add another guy in Grimes that's uh, that can get out and get after it and, and push the ball down the court. What, what do you think about Grimes in transition? Yeah, I mean, yeah, 1.4 points per possession uh, when running in transition. Uh, yeah, 92nd percentile. Can't can't really get much better than that. He can drive to the bucket, uh, you know, for a dunk. Uh, you know, he's got good speed in open court. Uh, off ball, he can really kind of find the open, you know, spot up, uh, you know, three, knock that down, no problem. Uh, and then, you know, off the dribble, he, you know, he can make a three. Uh, you know, we talked about that before, you know, in the half court. He can also do it in transition, pulling up. Um, and then we haven't really talked about his passing yet, but you know, in transition, that's kind of where he thrives as a passer. Uh, he's able to get the, the second defender to kind of commit to him, running down the center of the lane and then dishing off to, to an open uh, layup for teammates. Yeah, multifaceted in transition, as you said. And in some of these clips, you see he keeps his head up, sees the sees the court very well. Obviously, he can get out there and drive. You know, the pull-up shooting would definitely be clutch. It's something that the Knicks didn't do too well in transition either. And having the vision to pass it off, that, that'll be nice out there, man. He and RJ as the two wings or, uh, you know, him and McBride as well, just getting after it. It would certainly open things up for the Knicks offensively if they can create some turnovers and, and get out in transition and score. So let's start with some areas of improvement. Uh, while the three-point arsenal is definitely deep, uh, it definitely could improve in the mid-range. What do you see here looking at some of the tape? We talked about him you know, hitting 40% of his threes. Great number. Uh, but inside the arc, he, he really struggled last season. Shot just 41% inside the arc, which you know isn't a great number when, when you're speaking about you know shots closer to the basket. You would think the, the percentage would be higher. Um, and a lot of that is due to kind of the mid-range. He he, did, he does like you know mid-range pull-ups, 
Um, but those those are pretty difficult shots to make. You didn't hit them at, as a high enough clip uh, to really make them an efficient shot. So I think that's one area to work on. Uh, you know, we only shot 33% from the mid range, uh, 43rd percentile uh, various synergy. So just around average. And then kind of shorter jumpers inside 17 feet, he was even worse, uh, just 20% knocking those down, uh, which was 6th percentile via synergy. So definitely two areas to work on. And then overall, the finishing in the half court was, was just around average, um, you know, 48th percentile, shot 43% at the rim uh, via synergy. So just an area where he'll need to develop to kind of become a, a well-rounded scorer. Um, get more comfortable kind of driving to the rim, um, getting contact, getting to the foul line, just finding other ways to score without relying so heavily on that three-point shot, I think would just make him an overall better basketball player. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Um, one of the things you'd like to see him do is maybe attack the basket a little bit more, you know, especially when the jumpers aren't falling. You're going to have off nights, but finding additional ways to score, get to the free throw line and, and get some easier buckets there would certainly help him. I mean, on, on some of these mid ranges, he's certainly getting the separation and, and, and you like his release there. It's just, as you said, these are these are more difficult shots. So um, just something to work on at the next level. But like I said, I think attacking the basket a little bit more will, will certainly help him. Another area of improvement that we want to watch out for when it comes to Quentin Grimes is his ball handling. Or what do you see here on, on the film? So uh, while he's a good pull-up shooter uh, off the dribble, you know, he when he tries to drive to the basket, he tends to be a little loose with the handle. You could see him, you know, dribbling off his feet, you know, when he's going behind the back, dribbling off his back, um, you know, kind of losing the handle here, uh, you know, going in transition, gets, a st gets uh, stolen from him. Um, so just things to be tightened up. Uh, I think, you know, he will get better at it, but it's something that really limits him as a scorer right now. Uh, he's good at, you know, stepping back uh, with the jump shot. We've talked about his three point shooting, uh, but really getting to the basket is really his kind of, um, you know, one limitation. And I think it's because of the handle for the most part. Uh, you just see him, it's, it's just too loose. I think he tightens it up. Uh, he needs to stop going behind the back too often. Um, it's just one area of improvement that I think will help him kind of unlock uh, the next level of his uh, scoring potential. Yeah, as you see on the film, it sort of looks like he's, he's a bit too upright. Maybe if he gets low a bit, um, that gets a bit more compact. And as you said, that could have led to uh, the low numbers in terms of attacking the basket. Could have just been, you know, just lack of confidence in the handle and, and overall just being a little bit too loose and a little bit too fancy. So maybe just, you know, attacking with a bit more intention, tightening up a little bit. I think, I think he can correct that at the next level. I think, you know, going backwards and sidestepping is not the issue. I think he can actually use that to his advantage to create advantages going towards the basket with some pump fakes, things like that. So just things to, to kind of keep an eye on with his development uh, is really kind of improving the handle and him uh, helping him getting uh, to the basket. Another area for improvement is as a uh, pick and roll ball handler. You know, a as a shooter, he really pops off the charts. As we said, 86 percentile in, in pick and roll situations as, as a scorer. Uh, but how about passing situations? Yeah, so he's... He makes some, you know, pretty simple reads, um, you know, a decent amount of the time. Uh, there's flashes here and there where you kind of see that five-star uh, point guard prospect come out of high school uh, it, still in him. So he has definitely has the ability. He's just not as consistent as you would like. And again, at Houston, wasn't that big of an issue because he wasn't really asked to be in that role super often. And again, don't think it's going to be that much of an issue, at least early on in his Knicks career, just given you know the signings the Knicks made this offseason, especially with Kemba Walker and bringing back Derrick Rose. Uh, I'm sure they're going to get heavily, heavily, uh, you know, more uh, pick and roll possessions than than Quentin Grimes will. But, you know, as you could see kind of in the first clip, uh, you know, he kind of misses a swing pass that he can make uh, that, that's pretty much wide open. And then what, eventually he does find the role, I mean, he does look open. It just doesn't seem like he's comfortable making the live dribble pass uh, around defenders. He kind of kind of stops, picks up his dribble, uh, and that allows kind of defenders to pick the ball up. Uh, and then, you know, he also, I think it kind of comes back to the handle, right? Where, you know, live dribble passing is kind of a mixture of, of passing and having the handle and having the confidence in that handle. Uh, he doesn't really seem to have that. So everything's kind of half a step behind uh, where he kind of needs to be to kind of be an elite pick and roll playmaker. All right, let's take a look at the next uh, draft pick, the number 36 pick by the New York Knicks, man. Miles McBride, man. Number one thing that strikes off at the charts of me is, is this kid's a ball hawk, man. He's a gamer. What would you like about McBride as a point of attack defense? 
Yeah, I mean, just his intensity, uh, he just harasses guys on ball. You could see him going up against, you know, he always picks out the number one option on the team, whether it be, you know, Davion Mitchell here, top 10 pick, uh, steals the ball from him at half court. He's always in guys' faces. Um, you know, he picks up from full court, uh, you know, Jared Butler, he, he st st stays with him stride for stride. Uh, you know, ends up, you know, sticking to his man like glue. Uh, he, he's definitely, he just loves his passion on defense. He, he doesn't step down. Uh, you know, he, he really just wants to defend. Uh, and I think, you know, Tibbs, we talk about how, you know, he likes guys that will, you know, kind of have confidence in their pull up and, and shooting game. I think defense as well is a big thing. And I think Miles McBride, uh, you know, really is going to bring that effort and, and focus and intensity on the de defensive level, uh, you know, from day one. Yeah, uh, I mean, picking up from full court, you know, Tibbs is going to love that. Kid kid is an absolute hawk, rises to the channel, challenge. He's taking on Cade Cunningham. He's taking on Davion Mitchell. Doesn't matter who it is. Absolutely fearless. Uh, played football in high school, so you can see that, you know, that intensity, that dog in him is, is definitely there. So that's definitely what I like about McBride, man. It's going to get him on the court. All right, let's go to his three-point shooting, man. It's another plus for Miles McBride. Knicks, Knicks were after shooting in this draft, and, and they got another one with Miles McBride bride yeah absolutely and with him it, it, he's an elite you know catch and shoot guy uh 92nd percentile via synergy uh you know he shot 46 percent on catch and shoot opportunities in the half court uh so he immediately he's gonna you know have that off ball kind of gravity and off ball equity uh you know at the two guard uh even if he's not playing the, uh, you know on ball as much i think you know off ball he's gonna you know provide a lot of value there just given his catch and shoot ability um, but off the dribble, he's kind of an underrated guy in that in that standpoint. He took you know over 150 off the dribble shots uh, in the half court last season. Um, you know he ranked right about average uh, via synergy, you know 0.8 points per possession. Um, you know, and, and that really came came down to uh, in the mid range. He does like to uh, you know pull up mid ranger. Uh, you know, similar to what we were talking about with Quentin Grimes. Um, but with him, you know, we'll get to it. You know, an improvement area with the shot diet and everything like that. But three-point shooting is really his kind of bread and butter and where he's going to really add value at the next level from a scoring standpoint. Um, you just would like to see the volume kind of uptake a little bit more, uh, I would say. How about uh, his playmaking? Playmaking prowess is certainly a strength of his. Yeah, while he's not like the traditional kind of pick-and-roll playmaker, right? Mm -hmm. But he could just make a variety of passes in, in a variety of situations, whether it's you know kick-ahead passes in transition. Uh, he, he's always looking to push the pace. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, always, always has his head up uh, when he's dribbling the ball. He, you know, he doesn't always look for just his shot. He's always looking for the open man. Uh, and that leads to him doing these, these kick out passes, uh, these skip passes, um, just trying to find open shooters. And, you know, j just given some of the signings the Knicks have this offseason, you know, looking for an Evan Fournier type guy in the corner, looking for, you know, people that are just spotting up. I think he'll be able to kick out to those guys and make an impact with his playmaking. Yeah, as you said, man, and, and I think, that it, you know, playing football in high school certainly has a, has an impact on it, man, just his ability to see the court as, as a quarterback would see the field. And as, as he's looking to tape, he's always keeping his head up, looking to push the ball out, uh, get it out in transition as well, push the pace. So I think that'll certainly help us. And, and as you said, it, it's not flashy, uh, but, you know, just making simple reads, just making the, the right pass could, could certainly help us as a, uh, as a role player off the bench. Yeah, and he definitely seems kind of more comfortable than – than Grimes with the live dribble, one-handed passes, swing to the corner type of passes uh, in the flow of an offense. Uh, so that's another strength of his. He, he definitely has the handle to to get those passes off. Um, and I think it will be something to look forward to uh, for Knicks fans moving forward. As an improvement area, let, let's talk about shot diet. We, we talked about it with Grimes uh, being pretty good, but McBride, McBride can get a little chucky, man. What do you think about his shot selection at, uh, at West Virginia? Yeah, they're, they're kind of similar in that in that standpoint where, you know, uh, McBride didn't really get to the rim too often uh, at West Virginia, but I think he can. He seems to does create advantages with his handle, with his speed and strength, but he really loves the mid-range pull-up, uh, and they just don't go in at a high enough uh, clip to be an efficient shot. So you like to see him get more into that runner, uh, you know, floater range, get to the basket, get fouled more. Uh, not settle as much uh, for jump shots. You know, we, we talked about Grimes, um, you know, jump shot diet, uh, taking up, you know, half 70% uh, of, of his offense. Um, you know, I, you know, Big Bride is kind of similar to that. 
Um, you know, we would like to see more of his kind of off the dribble game, uh, getting to the basket and not just getting to the mid range pull up or the short, uh, you know, floater uh, pull up. But yeah, I, I think it's just an area of, of, of focus for him. Uh, it's just overall kind of scoring um, and not so reliant on the jumper. Yeah, well, playing on on the team with Derrick Rose and Emmanuel, quickly watching them, you know, hopefully that rubs off on him a little bit. And yeah, in some of the film, you, you kind of see where he has opportunities to go straight to the bucket and, and maybe throw up a floater or, or just attack the rim. And he kind of settles for that for the more difficult mid range jumper. So you definitely want to see him, you know, just have more confidence there, use his speed, use his physicality, and, and get to the rim. Maybe draw some contact and get to the free throw line. Yeah, absolutely. And then. You know, talking about the three pointer, you know, was one of his biggest strengths, but he only took 95 in the half court uh, mm. compared to, you know, 133 short to mid range jumpers. Mm. So you kind of want to see that flip flop, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, your biggest strength, you want to do that more. You want to get more volume out of that uh, attribute and kind of reduce the, the attribute where you're not as good. Uh, so I think it's flip flopping that and then getting to the rim more kind of the two areas of focus. While we like the, the, the on ball as, as a ball hawk defense, uh, off ball, he could he, he lapse a little bit. And what would you see here on the film? Yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it on the head. He's a ball hawk, right? He always wants to get the ball, whether that's jumping passing lanes for a steal or just picking his pocket, uh, which that can leave him kind of open for his man going back door. Uh, you know, it happened to him multiple times uh, in the Gonzaga game earlier uh, in, in the season. Um, you know, he gets caught ball watching, uh, you know, and just lets his man slip right be uh, behind him. Sometimes the guy, f you know, cuts right in, in front of him. Um, you know, he's just so focused on the ball, always wants to make an, uh, a positive event happen kind of on the defense event uh, that he just kind of lose his focus here and there. So definitely something that he'll need to improve on because, uh, you know, you can kind of envision him, you know, doing this on, on the Knicks and then, you know, Tibbs calling the timeout right out away and yanking him. So uh, definitely something, out of there, man. yeah, definitely something you, you want to work on if, if you're gonna, you know, play for Tibbs. Yeah, yeah, Tibbs will have no patience for that, and especially at the next level, man. You're gonna have uh, those quicker combo guards, more savvy. That they're gonna burn him back door all the time. That that opportunity is gonna be there for opposing offenses. I think you know McBride will certainly fill a role here off of his defense and three point shooting capabilities alone, and and I think he'll he'll be able to get on the court, especially if. Uh, the Knicks are going to be keen on, on managing the minutes of Kemba Walker and Derrick Rose. You know, injuries will certainly play a factor. Knock on wood that neither one of those guys get injured or out for an extended period of time. But I think as they as the season progresses and those guys, be, you know, get more on the load management, I think McBride will certainly get on the court. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see what he could do. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, you know, midseason there'll be some games where, uh, you know, Derrick Rose or, or Kemba are sitting out, especially – uh, on back to back. So I, I think I think Deuce uh, will get some opportunities um, and, and it will be exciting to see what uh, what he brings. Well, Al, man, Knicks are getting ready to tip off against uh, the Toronto Raptors. The first game of Summer League. Great job on these breakdowns. And uh, we'll, we'll be sure to have you back on to uh, break down some more film, man. Great job again, bro. Thank you. Absolutely. Anytime. Appreciate it. 